Hello buddy, Sanier, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video I want to talk about the latest acquisition from NTLA and Telia Therapeutics today buying, acquiring a specific private company that is specialized in CRISPR-Cas9 in a specific way that they believe can really help NTLA and Telia and CRISPR as a whole now, before we jump into today's video, you guys know the drill. Do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, guys, really does help the channel. If you've not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe, do hit the notification bell, and do join this channel if you wanna help this channel out. So, this news basically was released today. And shout out to CRISPR Tommy, because he is definitely the first one to cover this news. In fact, I didn't even see the press release. I didn't even know about it until I saw his video on YouTube. So again, shout out to CRISPR Tommy. And shout out for all the work he, he's done so far for this space. You know, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but CRISPR Tommy, I've learned so much from him. Um, so shout out to CRISPR Tommy. Thank you so much for your work. And I salute you from one YouTuber to another. So. This article basically press release from NTLA, NTLA announces acquisition of Rewrite Therapeutics, right? This is the private company name that NTLA has acquired. And basically they've, they've acquired not just the company, but obviously their proprietary and versatile DNA writing platform that enables a range of novel genome editing strategies. And also this is allowing Antelia to expand on their toolbox of adding a platform that is highly complementary to its existing CRISPR-Cas9 and base editing technologies, right? So NTLA basically in that, in this press release, not only they've been able to express that they've acquired this company, but they've, they were able to basically express that they are going further with base editing. Although they don't have any commercial product yet, and we've covered that in previous videos, but you can do whatever you want until you file for IND, and that's when you can expect many lawsuits from Beam Therapeutics, specifically from the holders of the patents of base editors, but that is another topic for another day. Uh, so basically here, you know, the company here, Rewrite has developed promising new technologies for genome editing, including DNA writing via CRISPR-Cas9 polymerase, uh, founded by Pioneer, scientists, Halperin PhD, and obviously these are individuals and team from Berkeley, right? And this is gonna be very important shortly when I go over uh, the next topic of this video. But I did wanna mention that this is basically the company that uh, NTLA has acquired. And what this deal looks like, it's basically NTLA will pay rewrite shareholders $45 million cash upfront and an additional 155 million in pre-specified research and approval milestones through a mix of NTLA common stock and cash. So this is quite quite, uh, quite standard in terms of type of deals, you usually give up upfront cash and then you have this type of deal where you can make a lot more money if you go through certain milestones and so on. What those milestones are, again, those are details that are not disclosed, mainly because Rewrite is a private company and you're probably not gonna get a lot of details out of this type of deal. But again, this is significant amount, probably not that much considering how much NTLA has in the, in the bank. A lot of these CRISPR companies have a lot of cash in their balance sheet. And I love that NTLA put some of its cash into use. I mean, this is less than like 5% of their total cash. So this is amazing. I love this type of deal because it shows that NTLA got the job done, their leadership, like I've mentioned in the past, they get the job done, whether that's with in vivo, that is, whether that's with moving further with base editing, or whether that is M&A or their latest partnerships as well that they've, uh, they've uh, done in the recent months. So I love this type of news. Uh, again, we'll see what this type of uh, acquisition can, um, can impact the company long-term. I do have my thoughts here, um, and I did wanna cover this article first before I went over it. So this article on Endpoint News, searching for CRISPR 2.0 and TLA spends 45 million cash on an unknown Berkeley spin out, right? And the most important part of this article is actually when they talk about Prime, right? So obviously referencing to Prime Medicine, which is basically backed by David, Dr. David R. Liu 
uh, lab, uh, which obviously they own patents of their prime editors. And what they this article says is it talks about prime, but also said that it is a, a complex and unwieldy system, difficult to work, work with, difficult to fit inside a viral vector, sometimes used to deliver other CRISPR systems, although there are improvements being made. And then the author of this article actually talks about a statement that Noor said, and uh, I believe Noor is the head of CV, basically venture capitalist behind this co company, obviously is biased because they have a lot of money poured into this company. Uh, they said that their technology, Rewrite's technology is simpler and smaller, allowing to be snuck inside a viral vector or lipid nanoparticle. So, and the biggest point here, I wish this was, this description started with this, unlike Prime, Rewrite Therapeutics technology remains unpublished. It should have, this whole description should have started with this sentence and then you go through these claims, right? It's fine to make these types of claims, uh, but reading this article, to me, I got the sense like Prime was being, uh, was being put down because now you have a proprietary technology that is claimed to be better than Prime editors or from Prime, but, Here's my, here's my thought, and again, this is, this is for you to do your own research. This is not financial advice. I've looked into it. I've had some conversation with a few individuals. It looks like rewrite. It looks like rewrite technology. It's not necessarily smaller or simpler. All it is is basically prime editors separated in two halves, right? So the perfect analogy I can make out of this is as if you were to come up with a technology, right? And then if you divide the technology in two pieces, then obviously if you look at one half, it'll be smaller than the other, but you still need both halves to work. So in theory, this is not necessarily simpler or smaller. This is just prime editors divided in two and you actually add certain proteins there to make it all work. Uh, again, that's the conversation I had. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's valid. I'm not 100% sure if what they're claiming here is valid, I just think it's misleading to start saying that Prime um, is complex and difficult to work with. I think it's unfair to Prime. I think it's unfair to the team uh, in Dr. Zhu lab. And I think it's unfair for Prime Medicine. Uh, but obviously this is an article meant to compare both technologies. I think it's amazing for NTLA that they were able to acquire it. My final thoughts on this is I think this acquisition was more for talent right, for NTLA to grab this type of talent. But I also think this is a power play move. And, you know, hear me out on this. I actually think this is a power play move from University of Berkeley. I think this is to put validity over the university. I think genome editing, CRISPR, biotech has been dominated and is still being dominated by MIT, the broad and Harvard and all the teams there, VCs, investors are always pouring money to those types of startups, those types of companies over there. And I think this type of acquisition, it may be potentially done as a power play to sort of boost the valuation, boost the valuation of companies specifically in the regions of Berkeley. And I'm gonna throw out the name here and you guys can run away with this information, do whatever you want. It's just speculation. But this may be a move to sort of increase the valuation of mammoth biosciences, which we know has the backing of Jennifer Downer, Dr. Jennifer Downer, and we also know that Dr. Downer also founded NTLA and also is backing this company somehow. And obviously she is involved with uh, Berkeley. That's my speculation made. That's the only speculation I'll make in this video. But I did want to cover this. I wanted to cover this news with NTLA acquiring. I think it's amazing for NTLA to grab that talent, to put some of that cash they have in the balance sheet into use, take a bet, right? Take a gamble. Uh, but I also wanted to cover this article where you start bashing Prime because it is difficult to work with. And I'm quoting, obviously, difficult to fit inside viral vectors. I think that's unfair. I think that's unfair for the teams uh, that actually work in Prime. And I think it is something we wanna see what happens through this acquisition. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Curious to see what you guys think. Leave me a comment. What do you guys think about my speculation? What do you guys think about this acquisition? Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you found value from it, do like this video, subscribe if you're not, and I will see you guys in the next video. Good luck to NTLA. Thank you.